Dion, what do you think this graph is representing? The distance of a comet to Earth. Beautiful. A distance of a comet to Earth um, in millions of miles, if you want to get specific, um, since it has been discovered in years. Um, Brennan, what do you know about the value of A? It's positive. It's definitely positive because it's opening up. It's definitely not negative. Um, and what else did you suspect about it? So we're suspecting it to be a value less than one more than zero because our parabola looks a little wide. Okay, um, that one we're not certain of, but we definitely know that a is positive and not negative. Um, what would happen, do you think, if the uh, a value was increased? It would get skinnier. And what if the a value was decreased? It would get wider, possibly. Yeah, because if it decreased into our negatives, it would flip it, right, and make it open down. Good. Um, in this context, what do you think it would, what would that mean about um, if our A is increasing, it got more, it got more skinny, it got more narrow. What would that mean about the comet? It got, it got closer, faster than it went more. Good. The, the, the rate, the speed of my comet is faster, right? It would drop down quicker, get closer quicker. Um, and then vice versa, if it was wider, then the speed of my comet's a little bit slower. What would it mean if it got flipped? What's the comet doing? It's going away, but they're coming back. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, the comet is the same distance away from Earth in 2012 and in 2020. Estimate the year when the comet is closest to Earth and explain your reasoning. Lots of different answers we could have here. <clears throat> what do you think? 2016? Yeah? How did you come up with that? <laughs> it's in between. If this is symmetric, right? 2012 to 2020 is what, an eight year span, right? So it probably changed direction four years in. So we'll pretend that's what this is. So four years in would give us about 2016. Would be that it's the closest to Earth. Okay. Beautiful. Ready for the last section of chapter two? No. This is it. This is our last one. So we'll start reviewing um, on Friday. Tomorrow we'll practice just two, three, and two, four. So hopefully your section one and two homework is already done. I opened section three yesterday. If you wanted to start it, you didn't have to. Uh, section two, I mean, section four is already open today. If you want to start it, you don't have to. Tomorrow you will work on both of them. Okay. And then we'll start our review on Friday. We're going to do the review on big ideas like we did last time. All right. Here we go. Today's stuff. When data, uh, so writing equations to model data. So it's, today is all about modeling and it's a lot of real world stuff. So our numbers won't always be nice and perfect and whole numbers, which is why we have our graphing calculators because we're going to need them, right? When data have equally spaced inputs, you can analyze patterns and the differences of the outputs to determine the type of function that can be used to model the data, okay? So, when you first did this, you did linear data, and you found the slope, right, because they had a constant first difference, okay? You found the difference in their y's as the, mix, as the x's moved forward, okay? That's how you knew it was linear. You were always adding 3, or you were always subtracting 5. That's what gave you your slope, okay? We can go further. If we found that first difference and they weren't the same, you probably stopped, okay? But if it's quadratic data and we did a second difference and they were the same value, that's showing second, there we go. I can't talk about it at the same time. Um, that's showing it's a quadratic function, okay? Linears have a power of one, right? 
mx plus b, your x has an exponent of 1. Your first difference is the same. Quadratics have an exponent of 2. The second difference is the same. Okay, so that's a good way to kind of remember that. So here's an example. Notice our, our x's are equally spaced. They're all going up by 1. That's important. That has to happen. When you found the difference of 9 to 4, 4 to 1, 1 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 4, 4 to 9, Okay, they weren't the same. It was negative 5, then negative 3, then negative 1, then 1, then 3, the 5, okay? So that's definitely not a line. If you found the differences again from there, so from negative 3 to negative 5 is now a positive 2. Negative 3 to negative 1 is 2 again. So there, the second differences are all the same. So that shows that this is a quadratic function. So that's how we can prove it from a table of values. Okay. Big thing is that your x's have to be equally spaced. So if they were going by 2's and then 5's and just some random stuff, we couldn't do this. Okay. And unfortunately, that does happen when we get like real life data. Like on the back, we won't be able to do this. Okay. But on the front, we can So, first example, here we go. NASA can create a weightless environment by flying a plane in parabolic paths. The table shows the heights in feet of a plane uh, T seconds after starting the flight path. After about 20.8 seconds, passengers be sent, begin to experience a weightless environment. Write and evaluate a function to approximate the height at which this occurs, okay? So I know I'm gonna plug in 20.8 in for x, right? Eventually we're going to do that, but I don't have an equation to plug it into yet, do I? No, so first off, let's make sure that this is going to be a parabola function. <clears throat> if I find my first difference from 21,000 to 26,900, what is that difference gonna be? There you go. How about from 2,600 to 3,600? Mm, try again. From 26,900 to 36. There we go. Yep, 3,700. From 36 to 321. Fifteen hundred. Thank you. Can we already figure out that this is not a line? Okay. Thirty-two to uh, one hundred. <coughs> excuse me. To thirty-one four hundred. Now we're going down seven hundred, so it's negative. And then thirty-one four to twenty-eight five. Down twenty-nine hundred. So we know it's not a line. Okay. Also, these are all the same, right? They're all going up by 10. So that's why we're able to do this with this table. All right, let's do our second difference. How does 5,900 become 3,700? <coughs> down 2200 37 to 15 it does it again 15 to negative 7 it does it again so they do have the same second difference so because of that I know it's going to be a quadratic okay so we need to create a quadratic function because it said write a function. I wasn't really quite sure. Now, did it say that it made a parabola path? Yeah, we could have gone with that, but I want you to practice this skill. Okay, so we do have to make a quadratic equation. So we're going to kind of go back to yesterday and back to Algebra 1. So stay with me. Okay, what information about my parabola do I have in this table? I have a y-intercept. Do we see that? 
right here, I have the y-intercept. Now, did that help me with any of my forms yesterday? Does that help you in vertex form? Not really. Did that help you in intercept form? Well, those were the x-intercepts, right? So we didn't really get to use y-intercept yesterday. But which form does the y-intercept show up in? Standard form. So what part of the equation do I already know? I know this is C because it's my y-intercept, right? Okay. We are going to pick another point to help us. I'm going to show you how it's going to help us. I'm just going to do the next one in the list. I'm going to use um, 10 for my x and 26,900 for my y. <coughs> We're going to use standard form, okay? All right, how do I do this? Okay, we're going to make two standard form equations. Okay, so stay with me. So I'm gonna use x for 10, uh, 10 for x and 2,900 for y. So if I put that into just a standard form equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. And I plugged in 10 for x. This first piece becomes 100a, right? b times 10 becomes 10b. We have a C value, which we already know is 21,000. And if I make it equal to Y, I'm going to make it equal to 26,900. Okay. What's the problem with this, though? I have two variables, right? We, we don't usually have two variables. There was something we did in Algebra 1 to help me eliminate one of those. Do you remember doing elimination? Yes. So in order for us to do that, I need another equation with an A and a B. Okay. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to pick our next point. Okay. So now I'm going to plug in 20. So 20 squared gives me 400, so I have 400A. 20 times B is going to give me 20B. We still have the same C value, but now we're equal to 30,600. So because I have two variables, there's lots of strategies. If you wanted to do substitution, you could. I, you could. I would not recommend it because these numbers are kind of big. Okay, that can get real messy real quick. Is it impossible? No. Okay, I'm going to suggest elimination. So before I can do that, I need, if you remember, you stack your A's, you stack your B's, you're equal to a constant. Right? So let's move that 21,000 over to the other side so we can have it in that form. So my A's, my B's equal to a value. <clears throat> so my first one is blue. Um, will end up being 100A plus 10B. I'm going to subtract 2100 to the other side to get 5900. So right now all I'm doing is subtracting 21,000 over. So my next one is going to be 400A plus 20B. If I do 30,600 subtract 21,000, we're going to get 9,600. Okay. Do we remember elimination? Not really. Okay, so that's fine. The point of elimination is to eliminate a variable, meaning when I add these two equations together, 
one of these variables is going to cancel out, okay? So if I multiplied, let's say, my top equation by negative 2, see how that would turn my b to be a negative 20b? Yes? And then my b's would be eliminated, and I can find a, okay? But the thing is, you can't do it just to that one piece. you got to do the whole equation. So let's multiply this entire first equation by negative 2. I'm going to get negative 200a minus 20b, and it will be equal to negative 11,800. I'm not going to do anything to the second one. Because now we're going to press them together, and my b's are going to cancel. They're going to eliminate. So if I press these equations together to get one equation, what is negative 200 and positive 400 going to give me? Positive 200a. Negative 20b and positive 20b, that's the elimination. And the negative 11,800 being pressed with positive 9,600 gives me negative 2,200. Now, can you solve for A? Yeah, because we got rid of B. So if I solve for A, what do we get? If I divide both sides by 200, negative 11. So my A value, I now know, is negative 11. We got that first piece. We even know C, right? We even know we're going to add 21,000 to the end. The issue is, what's my B value? Oh, no. We're going to use A to find B. Let's plug it back into one of these guys. You can get B by itself. You want to do the blue? Yeah? Okay. So we're going to take that A value of negative 11 and plug it back in. Um, so if I plug it into our blue one, so 100 times negative 11 plus 10B equals 5,900. You okay? Okay. So negative 1,100 plus 10b equals 59, add that over, we get what, 7,000? Divide by 10, we get 700. Are we okay? So now I know my b, so I can finish my equation. So what's going to be the middle part? Plus 700x for my standard form, because now I got my B value, plus 700x. Look at that beautiful work. So pretty. Oh, we're not even done. We did the whole write the equation part. <laughs> right? All that to write the equation. Yes, that was a lot. You're doing great. You're doing great. What was the question, though? Yes, we need to know how high the plane goes to get the weightless environment. So we're plugging in what? We know the time. 20.8. So we're going to plug in 20.8. Oh, we'll do purple. So negative 11 times 20.8 squared plus 700 times 20.8 plus 21,000. Mm. is going to give us a height of what? Remember, you can type that in just as you see it. 
30,800.96. <coughs> Do we all get that? Remember, you can type it in exactly as you see it. Negative 11. Parentheses, 20.8 squared plus 700 times 20.8 plus 21,000. And there's our 30,800.96. So we're going to have a height of, I'm going to say about 30,800 feet. That is when the weightless feeling starts. That's a beautiful problem. That makes my math heart happy. Does it make your math heart sad? It should make your ha it makes you happy. Okay, so that's the only one we're gonna do by hand, by the way, because when we get to our examples on the back, we can't find our second difference because our x's are not being increased by the same value each time. Okay, so our next two are going to be all in the calculator. So definitely make sure you have a graphing calculator. <coughs> You all wanted to know if you could plot points, and I kept telling you no, and I was lying, and I'm sorry. We can plot points, and I'm about to show you how. Okay? You ready? Woohoo! We're going to plot points, and then we're even going to draw a graph to, like, show how it, like, fits. It's going to be cool. All right. Real-life data that show a quadratic relationship usually do not have a constant second difference. Okay, because the data are not exactly quadratic. Then we're doing like a line of best fit. There's a quadratic function of best fit also. Okay. Um, relationships that are approximately quadratic have second differences that are relatively close in value. Many technology tools have a quadratic regression. That's what we're going to use. Feature that you can use to find a, a quadratic function that best models a set of data. So we're going to have our best fit quadratic function. Okay. So the table we're going to use shows fuel efficiencies of a vehicle at different speeds. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, write a function that models the data. Use the model to approximate the best gas mileage. Okay. So we want our, we'll talk about it later. Hold on. First things first. Create a dot plot using technology to see if it's a linear or a quadratic relationship within the data. So we're going to make our L1 and our L2 list. Do we remember how to do that? Okay. We're going to push the stat button. We are going to edit that list. So we're going to push enter. Remember, if you need to clear things, make sure you push clear over L1 and go back down. There's also this function. See how it says clear list? If you have a lots of lists to clear out, you can click that also. You can clear lists, and it'll, it'll clear them all. Oh, you got to tell it which one. You got to tell it, oh, I want you to clear list one, and I want you to clear list two. You can do that, and it would also clear them out for you. So a couple of ways to clear your data if there's data in your way. Okay, so stat, enter. Go ahead and plug in your L1 list and your miles per hour values, the 20, 24, 30, 36, and then your L2 is going to be miles per, per gallon. 20. Are you missing an L1, Dion? Is that what you were saying? You're going to do it on your calculator. Was somebody saying that they're, they're missing an L1? Why is like an X at the top and then it just says like an L1? Okay, I will come fix you. Yeah, make sure you didn't go to the table. Make sure you go to your stat lists. Yes. Did you fix it? Is it good? Okay. 
24, 19, 5. <coughs> we good? Our information is in? Do you have a calculator? What are you doing? You gotta be able to do this. Tim Moore, what are you doing? What's happening? Is your information in your calculator? If you want to refuse to work in my class, I will gladly send y'all to student affairs, and then you can choose to do whatever you want to life up there. But when you're in my room, you're going to respect me. You're going to stay on task. Thank you. Do we have our list in? Yep. Yes? Okay. Now it's time to create our dot plot. So if you still are working on it, your table, you're not going to do it? Is that what you just said? What did you just say? You good? You got it? Okay, here we go. Now we're going to, ooh, rolling up the eyes. That's a good touch right there. Don't need it. Don't need it, Maddie. Are you? Okay, I hope so. I'm waiting for the day you don't come in here and put your head down. So if you want to keep your attitude going, that's what needs to stop. So we're going to go to y equals. Okay. Remember the plot, this plot one, plot two, plot three going on up here? Okay, we haven't used those yet. We're about to use those. Okay, that's where we're going to make us uh, a dot plot or any other kind of scatter plot, histograms even. That's where they're going to be from. Okay, so what we're going to do, see how in blue above it, it says stat plot. So do second y equals. These are our special kinds of graphs that we're going to use. Second y equals brings us here. You've made your L1, you've made your L2, and then we've done second y equals. And then we should be getting to our stat plots, okay? There's lots of different ones we can use, okay? Um, let's turn on plot one, so I'm going to push enter. Okay, this shows up. I'm going to turn it on. Okay, there's lots of options for us. So we have the dot plot. We can connect it. We can do histograms. We can do box and whiskers even. Okay, <clears throat> we're making a dot plot. So we already have that done. We're using list one for my X. We're using list two for my Y. Yes, you okay? You see what I see? Okay, you can even choose how they're like marked on your graph if you want squares or plus signs or however you want it marked on there. I like the square personally. For me, I can pick a color. Some of you can choose your color. I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. Yeah, you probably don't have colors. So once that's there, push graph. So you've turned on your plot, your push graph. Oh no, nothing's there. Okay, but let's remember, friends, isn't this a 10 by 10? Look at your numbers. They go from 20 to 70, right, for your Xs. Your Ys go up to what, 25 something? So do we need to fix our window? Yes. Okay, go into your Y equals and um, clear out if anything's on like a Y equals something. Yeah, it's probably a graph of something else. Okay, your window might already be fixed, is what's possible. All right, we're going to fix my window. So everyone push window for me. Everyone push window for me. We are here. So my X's need to go to up, up to at least 70, right? So what do you want to do, like 80? Sound good? Okay. We don't want to stop at 70. We want a little bit, a little bit extra. 
Uh, my Y's need to go up to what? 30? Did someone say 30? That's fine. Because my highest Y is what? 20, 25.8. So going up to 30 would be fine. So we're gonna, we need to add more to our window. Now push graph. So now push graph. Our dots are now there. <laughs> All right, so what kind of function is this showing me? Oh, see how it's showing that quadratic shape? Yes. Okay, so that proves this is going to be a quadratic function. This is quadratic data for sure. Okay, this is a quadratic function. We had dots that looked like that. Okay, so we're going to use our graphing calculators to find our quadratic equation. Okay. Do you remember how we got the mx plus v? Remember? It was like second stat, and then you clicked mx plus v. So do second stat. Oops. Oh, I lied. Just stat. Just stat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Rewind. Rewind. We're here. Sorry. Back up. We're on my graph. There we go. Dot plot. We see, oh, that makes a quadratic. I want the quadratic equation that matches it. Push stat. There we go. We're going to calculate the equation. So stat. Calculate. So last time we did AX plus B, but look right underneath it. Oh, quadratic regression. We want this one. We want that option. Quadratic regression. Click enter. Yes, we're using list one, list two. There we go. And now I have my A, B, and C values for my standard form. Like, do this on the test and you can get all the stuff you want. What do you mean? Like, like on the test or something, and look at your test, you can just, like, get the calculator and then use it. It depends on what it says. Like, you mean, like, instead of doing elimination? Yeah. Like, you didn't like this? This was not fun? You didn't enjoy this? What? Um, you have to follow the directions. So, if it says use, use technology to find the equation, yes, you can do this. If it doesn't say that, I'm going to see some work. All right, so now I have an equation I can use. So we're going to do y equals negative 0.014x squared. I usually do about two or three decimal places. Honestly, the more the better. Um, it makes it more exact. Uh, my b value, I'm going to do 1.37. And then our C value, I'm going to round to about 7.1. All right, step three says to graph the regression equation from step two and find the best gas mileage. So we're going to now go into Y equals. Does anyone still need that? We're good? You good? So go into y equals and put that into y1. Go into y equals and put that equation into y1. And then push graph. Yep, graph that equation. Hmm? No, in y1. The plot one is your dot plot. Leave, leave that alone. Now we're just adding to it. So y equals, here we go, where is it? Negative 0.014x squared plus 1.37x 
minus 7.1. So put that into y1 and now push graph again. Hmm? Yep, press graph. Press graph. See what, what math magic happens. Isn't it nice? Yes, sir. Okay. Fix it. Push window. So your X's need to go to about 80 for your maximum. And your Y's, we put a maximum of about 30. All right, so... Look at that. Pretty nice, huh? So it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. Okay, so the reason why I like the squares is because it shows if the line like actually crosses that point or not. Just, so that's my visual. I look like those first three points, like they're almost directly on that quadratic, right? Some are a little missed, but they're really, really close. Okay, so this real world data almost models a perfect quadratic, but it is just a tad bit off. Okay, now the question was when is the best gas mileage? So it's when you get the most gas per, per gallon, right? So where is that going to be found on a quadratic equation? At the vertex, at the top. Do so you remember how to find the vertex or the maximum? Let's do it again. We can use a calculator. Have we done this? We've done this. Second, calculate, which is that trace button. We can find the maximum. Okay, so we're going to find the maximum right here. I'm going to push enter. We, it's going to ask you for the left side and the right side of the vertex. You kind of have to tell it where the vertex is. Okay, so where I am, that's on the left side, right? Then it wants the right side. See how it says, it says right bound? So we're just going to move to the right somewhere. Come on, go over. There we go. So just go to the right side somewhere. Push enter again. So you should see two markers, okay, with your vertex in the middle of it. And then see how it says guess in the corner? It's like, hey, you want me to guess? Yes, I do. Push enter one more time, and it will it'll move your marker to the vertex, and it tells you the X is 48.92, and your Y is 26.4. Hmm? Which one? Do you mean my, my blinking X? Do second trace, and then click maximum. Mm -hmm. So you'll click enter. So when you do it, you'll push enter on the left side, it'll make a mark. And then you move it over, push enter again on the right side, it'll make another mark. As long as on the left of the vertex and then on the right of the vertex, it doesn't matter where. Okay? So, answer the question, what is the best gas mileage? Is it the X or the Y? It is the Y. So what is our best gas, gas mileage? 26.4. Yes. Twenty six point four miles per gallon. So that came from that vertex. Um, what was the X? Uh, forty eight point nine. So that's like the speed of the car, right? So that's the best speed to drive to get the best miles per gallon, which is 26.4, okay? Because if you drive too fast, 
the car has to work extra, right? Same thing if you drive too slow, your car has to work extra. Okay, so we're not going to get to the last example, and that is okay. If you would like to try it on your own tonight, that's fine. We will definitely go over it together um, tomorrow to practice before you start doing your Chromebook stuff. Okay, so the next example is still very calculator heavy. It's all in the calculator. All right, good job.